Yeah. Agents, just stop taking like property photos with your camera phone. Like it's just, it, it, it blows my mind. Like. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about marketing a property, best practices. If you are a seller, like what, what can I do as a seller? How is the best price for my property? Does it have to be like, do we have to have like professional photos? Like, I feel like if you take like pictures with like a, a camera phone, like an iPhone 13 or something, I mean, it has high resolution, right? Can't I just upload that to Zillow? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about it. I think professional photos are like the absolute bare minimum. I can't tell you how many listings I see with iPhone photos. Photos are upside down, Pisses photos are off. sideways. Yeah, it's so and this dude or woman, this man or woman is making a commission. This agent making a commission just because they went in there and snapped a few photos of their yeah. cell phone. So in terms of marketing, I think professional photography is a must. Videography is a must. 3D floor plans is a must. Yeah. Floor plans period is a must. Every time that I take a buyer on a showing, the first thing that we're looking at is the floor plan. Let me see the floor plan. What are the sizes of the rooms? What kind of, like you can guesstimate square footage. You can see if you can fit your beds in there. You know, it's, it's important stuff. I think those things are like bare minimum. And then that's like your collateral and you take those things and you can put it out everywhere. Yeah. So like social is obviously huge. Mm -hmm. Like you're, I think agents should have their face on video showing the property. Yeah. I think that you should have it everywhere you can. Yeah. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Literally every social media website. Yeah, LinkedIn, yeah. LinkedIn, you, LinkedIn you know, yeah. name it. I think like the more traditional methods still work really well. I think email blasts, mm -hmm. if it's like, if you're hosting an open house, email blasts to brokers, yeah. email blasts to people in the area. Like you can literally go around and knock on doors mm -hmm. and let the neighbors know, hey, my name's David, I have a listing on your street. I just wanted to put a face to the name. If you want to come by our open houses this weekend, please feel free. Yeah bring your friends, uh, like flyering, I think is also great. So I think it's like our job as listing agents to like, to do all of those things. We need to put the property in the best position to sell. That's why we're hired. That's why we make our fee. I also think agents should be marketing themselves as well. You know, like we're running a business here and, yeah. and the bigger following that we can create through social media, email lists, whatever it is, the better it is for every property that yeah. we sell. Agreed. Yeah, I feel like marketing is, I totally agree with you on every aspect, especially the photos part. I mean, that's what that's the first showing. The first showing happens online. When you're swiping through the photos, when you're looking at the video, the floor plan, the 3D tour, that's the first showing. Yep. The second showing is when they actually visit the property. And the third showing is cherry on top. Having those professional photos done is super important because, and I'm sure like every, everybody does this, right? People can go on their phones, they can swipe through the photos like really quick and decide if it's something that they want to go see, right? Like if you're swiping through photos and like it was taken with an iPhone photo, which pisses me <laughs> off by the way, like why yeah. agents? Just stop taking like property photos with your camera phone. Like it's just, it, it, it blows my mind. Like, listen, we're making we're, like the commissions that, that are paid out to agents, yeah. even at a discounted rate are not pennies, you know, like right. you should be spending the whatever, 300, $400 to get someone out here to take a proper photo. Like that's the bare minimum. Agreed. Yeah. Bare minimum. Bare minimum. Yeah. I mean, and, and like I said, like it's super important because like having like super crisp, photos and I don't know if we can like insert a picture of like a camera phone yeah. uh, like listing yeah. versus like a professionally yeah. photographed listing um, but there's a huge difference and like that is what's going to bring people to the property let's talk about something else that brings people to the property and that's like what the actual property like looks like on the inside so like what are you telling your your sellers who want to get the highest and best price in this market but you know their property might be from you know, it hasn't been updated since 2005. And we all know what that looks like, right? Like the orange cabinetry, you know, non-soft clothes, like slabbing, right. slamming cabinets and things like that. Like, what are you telling those folks in order to, to market their property well, to meet their goals? You know, let's talk about something that's really important when it comes to getting the highest and best price. If price is your goal, if, if you're selling price is your goal, what are you telling sellers whose properties haven't been updated since like 2005, but they want to list like, at a 2023 market value. I think like the first thing that we do is like obviously walk the property and tell clients what changes they can make to get them the best bang for their buck. Usually that comes down to like 
things in the kitchen and the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Maybe sanding and staining the floors, switching out cabinets, do some countertops, things like that. Yeah. If clients don't want to put the money up, then I think it's just setting the expectation that like people, if they're walking into a place that's from 2005, you're probably not going to get the premiums that people are getting for stuff that was built in like 2020 and after. The next thing would be staging. Staging mm -hmm. goes like a really long oh, way. Yeah. And it's hard to convey to sellers how important it really is mm -hmm. until they say, okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And then they see what their place looks like with that staging in there. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God. It's a different place. Yeah. It's a yeah. different place. Yeah, yeah. This looks amazing. Yeah. Staging goes a long way. There's yeah. some kind of stat. I think, yeah. I think on average it gets you like 7% yeah. more. Like it's, a, I think it, it sells like 18% faster and gets you like, I think yeah, anywhere between like seven and 12% like Something more like and, and than other properties that aren't staged, which is important. It's like a very psychological play because it's really hard to envision a space when it doesn't have like furniture in it. When you're walking into like an empty room, like you can't really be like, I could put a table right. here. It could be about this side. Like you, you really have to like get a measuring tape or, yeah. or whatever, or get an actual table and put it there in order to envision. Right. Having a, a property that's already staged takes all of the heavy lifting out of it. It's so easy for somebody to walk in and make that decision. It goes a long way. I mean, it makes our jobs as listing agents a lot easier. And like you said, a big thing that people don't realize is how quickly something sells. Yeah. If you have carrying costs for a property and it and you're looking at an extra mortgage payment, an extra HOA payment, yeah. like it's a lot of money. That probably pays for your staging in itself. Exactly. So it's something that I always recommend and it goes like, it just goes a really long way. Another thing that kind of goes hand in hand that is actually more like hands-on marketing rather than like digital marketing, I feel is when you're actually like showing the property to people. That is a really big part of your marketing and like of our jobs as agents, right? Being able to sell the property. To me, it's it's almost like not even selling the property. It's like selling a lifestyle, right? Like you have to know like the buyer that's coming in and you have to be able to help them see themselves in the property. So like when you're touring, you know, a buyer, or when you have buyers and agents who are coming into your listing, it, what, how are you having those conversations with them? Yeah, I, I think it's like you said, like a lot of it is, is presentation. I don't even really look at it as like selling how most people think of it. Yeah. I think of it as presentation and like knowing about the property, knowing what to point out, knowing like we work with a lot of buyers too, knowing what these buyers are looking for in a property so that you can find it in the listing that you have and point it out to them. So what I usually do is like I go through and every room, I try to pick like one or two things that I know buyers are looking for that this property has and I emphasize those. So as we walk through, like I'm educated on the property, I've talked to the seller, I've had them fill out probably more questions than they would ever want to yeah. about the property. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna know the age of the mechanicals, I'm gonna know the, the age of the appliances, I'm gonna know what type of countertops it is, I'm gonna know when they redid the the powder room yeah. in the main floor, I'm gonna know what type of flooring it is. Like all these little things that buyers might overlook, I'm gonna know, I'm gonna point them out. And then just having things, insightful things things to say that I know buyers are looking for. Yeah. And it's not even selling, it's just it's just presenting the property in the proper. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, another thing that I wanna kind of touch on is kind of just talking about the area a lot too, because when you're looking at properties, it's really easy, like as a buyer, to overlook the area and what the area has to offer. So it's like, yeah, like this property can, you know, perhaps suit your lifestyle needs, but also like look what's around you, like freaking Starbucks on every corner, yeah. or you have like the gym, the grocery stores right up the corner. You have, you know, A plus rated schools over here, highway down the street, right? Knowing yeah. that kind of also sells the property. Cause when yeah. you're buying a home, you're not just buying the home. You're buying the area. What a lot of our job comes down to is asking the right questions yeah. and then having answers to those questions. If a buyer comes in and they say, oh, you know, I need a place to uh, to put the dog bowls or mm -hmm. something. Okay, now I know that client has a dog. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say, hey, we have this park at the end of the block. It's great if you wanna walk your dogs there, that's great. Yeah. If they have kids, how can one of these rooms be used as a nursery? Right. Like you need to know what buyers are looking for and what makes that listing sellable to them. It's just finding the right fit for mm -hmm. clients and properties. Yeah. And I think that's like the, your main role when you're selling to places. Yeah. Knowing the situation of the buyers and being able to, just I don't know, I'm be, 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 a, be a matchmaker <laughs> yeah. essentially, right? Like, okay, that's your needs, that's your lifestyle. All right, cool, like check out this area. 
this house right here kind of has everything that you need, I feel. And maybe maybe it works out. Let's check it out or yeah. really see it. Like It's almost like being a matchmaker. So if you guys have any other questions about how to market your property in order to get the best result, feel free to reach out to me or David Fields here. We have our information right here on the screen. Talk to you soon.